So I'm going to go to Object Placement and I'm going to add an STL file. This is the Rook for my robot chess set. Uh, it's, I'm still having a hard time printing it this small size, so I'm going to scale it up another 50%. And if I wanted, I can. Oops. This is um, generally it's good to keep on the rotate. Middle mouse button will pan, left mouse button will actually move the object. And if I don't like where I put it, I can always come and hit center object and it'll put it right back. Drop object will um, put it down directly onto the uh, onto the bed. And then for rotation, you can set your the rotation just by these fields here. So next we go to the slicer and I already did some configure the settings the way I want it, so I'll tell it slice with slicer. So finish slicing and automatically moved me over to the G code editor tab so I can see the G code that it actually printed. And I also have a visualization here. A handy feature is if you any line you click on the G code it'll uh, tell you uh, what that code actually is. So if I go up the top, M104, sets the extruder temperature, G21, setting the units, G28, that's a home to the origin. And then if you switch over to visualization, it gives you these options. You can show the whole code, or it can show just a single layer, and draw the slider to see which layer. Or you can show a range, and then control the first and last layer, and watch it watch it grow. And then I can zoom in once it finishes here. Middle mouse button, zoom up. Now these lines here are the support that Slicer created to handle this uh, 90 degree overhang. If I dial down that, for that last layer back I can see what path it's going to take and how much fill it is. And I had gone into my 3D settings and I made the filament green because currently that's the color I've been printing in. So it's it's as much of a, a preview of the final print as possible. The next is uh, control. At this point, um, we need to con uh, connect to uh, to actually be able to run this print. Okay, so I'm back at the printer. I'll hit connect. And as I can see, I'm currently connected now. I can move in all the directions. And here you can see, also similar to printer face, you get your 0.1, 1 millimeter, 10, and 100. It's a little trickier to hit the right button, I think, the printer face, but maybe with a little practice keys to it. And then the same home buttons. And um, park is a position that you can set um, in the configuration. Um, I haven't really messed with that right now. And then here you can set your defaults speed for extrude amounts, retract amounts, which are separate, which are temperature. And here's our graph. It's monitoring the temperature, which is going down. I need to turn the extruder heat on in the print bed. Okay, the extruder is now up to temperature. So I'm going to hit run job. See what happens. So went to home, bed's coming up to Z home, and it's off and running. And down here, you can see a nice little animation. I can push the zoom button. This is a feature I really like. Okay. Actually shows an animation of the print in progress. Not that you couldn't look over the printer and see it happening, but it's a good way of seeing how it's going. 
So anyway, this is Repetier. This is definitely worth looking at and playing around with. I think this has everything that everybody's been looking for in a nice, single, easy-to-use software solution that, um, that handles everything in one place. Uh, so uh, I know it's a little bit complicated to set up with the firmware, but it's uh, it's definitely worth the effort. So um, so give it a try.